code editors versus IDEs. What are the advantages of one over the other, and which one do I prefer? So before we get to that, if you're new around here, remember to subscribe and ding that little bell icon down below because I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year, and your help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon and welcome back to another video. So a good place to start would be just defining some terms. So an IDE is an integrated development environment. It's basically a code editor plus some debugging tools, some compiling tools, basically an entire tool chain and also some syntax highlighting, all this stuff that'll just make your development experience much easier. Whereas a code editor, on the other hand, is basically just a glorified text editor. It's a text editor plus some syntax highlighting. Occasionally it'll have plugins support and things like that. Generally the good code editors will have things like this and also will occasionally come with other things like maybe they have an inbuilt debugger in the case of something like VS Code, but you can't always expect there to be a debugger. So. One of the benefits of using an IDE is that it has lots of tools just built into it by default. It comes usually with a compiler, a debugger, linters, all these things that you're probably going to be using when you use a development environment. Even if you're gonna be using a code editor, you're probably gonna be using a lot of these tools. They just won't be internal to the application. Along with that, the code editors obviously have far less tools. They occasionally will come with debuggers. The good ones also have integrated terminals as well. And that's probably the most you can expect. Usually they don't come with compilers or linters or anything else like that. At most you're gonna get a debugger, but even then that's not always the case. The thing with IDEs though, is that there is a lot of extra tools in there that you probably won't ever use. Or if you do use, you won't use very often, especially for very small projects. So if you take something like Eclipse, it has like full coverage checkers, where in like big projects, yeah, you're going to be using something like that. But when you're just writing something small for yourself, you're probably never actually gonna use that feature. So what's the point of having it? And that's one of the benefits of using a code editor in that respect. It has everything that you need and nothing else, which makes it a lot faster and a lot more lightweight. So it ends up using far, far less system resources. Even in the case of something like VS Code, which is an Electron app, which is inherently slow because it's written in JavaScript, it's still much faster than every single IDE that could possibly exist, just because of how much extra weight there is with those applications. With something like Eclipse and something like IntelliJ, they are much, much slower applications, but you do get a lot of benefit from that. And one of the benefits you get is you have very, very strong language support because a lot of them are typically tied directly to a language, either to a language or to a small subset of languages. So you take Visual Studio, for example, that is tied to C Sharp, Microsoft's version of C++, F Sharp, a couple of other Microsoft languages. And then you have IntelliJ, which is used for the JVM languages. You have WebStorm, which is used for some of the web scripting languages and a couple of other IDEs like that. You guys should have a general idea of the IDEs that are out there. Whereas with code editors, they aren't tied to a specific language. They have far weaker language support. Usually at most you get syntax highlighting, which depending on what you're doing may be good, but for some things like, for example, with Visual Studio's GUI builder or Xcode's GUI builder isn't really enough because when you're working with GUI applications, it is quite useful to actually have a GUI builder to work with because if you're going to just be building it with code, it's a lot harder to actually work with stuff like that. I have done it before with Swing and with JavaFX and it is an, an absolute pain to work with. You'd never really want to be handwriting GUI code unless you're just doing it on the web. And even then, there's been some things where I've seen where we're starting to actually move away from that. So if you take something like Visual Studio's GUI Builder, it generates a lot of the boilerplate code that you would have to write by hand if you were to use a code editor, and that saves you tons and tons and tons of time. Along with that, it comes with built-in code generation support. And yes, I know that for something like VS Code, you can download snippet extensions, but from my experience, they are just never as good as what is built into an IDE, where you have native support for a language. You don't just have what someone thinks is the important stuff to actually keep with a snippet, you have pretty much everything that you're going to need. So I've mentioned debuggers before, and basically every IDE on the planet will have a debugger built into it. 
but with a code editor you can't always have this guarantee. However, if you do really need to use a debugger, if you're doing web development, then your browser will typically have a debugger built into it. Or if you're doing something else like C++ or C Sharp, Java, anything like that, there are terminal-based debuggers that you can use and there are GUI front ends for them if you still need to use a debugger. I keep saying that I'm going to do a video on debuggers at some point, but I keep actually forgetting to do it. One day I'll get to that video because I'm personally not a fan of them, at least for small projects. I do see the benefit on larger projects, but for smaller projects, they tend to just be a waste of time. But we'll get to that when I get to that video one day? I don't know when. It'll eventually happen. So because a lot of IDEs are either bound to a language or bound to a small subset of languages, when you work with different languages, you tend to jump between different tools. And this doesn't sound too bad, but when you use a code editor, you can really learn how that application works. You can set up all of your bindings to work perfectly for your development experience. And you don't really have to worry about, oh, what is the hotkey to do this in this program? What's the hotkey to do this in this program? All of your language work is within one application. So your hotkeys are just going to remain the same. Yes, you can move your configs around between applications. And depending on what you're using, for example, if you're using the JetBrains suite, for example, you can directly transfer your configs between the applications. I think you might be able to sync them as well, but I might be thinking of something else. And that does save you a lot of time, but there's still some minor differences between each of those IDEs that it isn't a perfect fit between them. You still have to actually learn to use a new one when you want to switch to it, even when it's within the same suite. And obviously it is way worse when you're jumping outside of a development suite. So you're jumping from Visual Studio to Eclipse or you're jumping from Eclipse into the JetBrains suite, for example. There is a massive application learning curve to actually be able to do everything that you wanted to do in that IDE that you could do in the previous one. So along with being tied to a lot of tools like compilers, debuggers and all that, IDEs are always tied to a development tool chain. There's some where you can swap in something new, like for example, the, the web-based development environments because typically you have to swap in like NPM and things like that. So it can't bind you to one tool chain. But when you're working on things like C++ or Java, take Eclipse for example, I believe that it binds you to using Ant. At least it did when I was using it. Maybe that's changed now. And then Microsoft has their own way of doing tool chains and JetBrains has their own way of doing it as well. Whereas with a code editor, you don't get any of that support, but you can completely build up the tool chain for whatever your application needs actually are. So typically IDE tool chains will work perfectly for whatever project you're doing, but you might run into some difficulties where you have to actually go and work out how to configure it. Whereas if you've built the entire tool chain by yourself, you don't run into that difficulty. If you need to fix something, then you probably have a much deeper understanding of how it actually works. And of course, the biggest reason that you want to use a code editor is because of the bragging rights. That's obviously the most important reason. So if you're going to be writing C++ with a code editor, go write it with Vim or something and you're like, oh, I, I wrote this application with Vim and I did all of my tool chaining by myself. It's not actually too important of a reason, obviously, but it's something you have to throw on the end there because if you do a, use a code editor for something, then you're probably going to brag about it because it actually is a lot more work than just using an IDE. So at this point in the video, you might be wondering, what do I use? So I typically only do web development work right now. So I'm entirely living within a code editor. So I will use VS Codium, which is a version of VS Code that basically just strips out Microsoft's telemetry stuff and it has a bunch of neat defaults that are nice with it. But when I do use traditional programming languages like Java and things like that, I will actually go and use an IDE. So for the Microsoft environment, I will use Visual Studio, which is why I do need to actually get my Windows VM set up or set up a dual boot on my system. Or if I'm going to do anything else, the only IDEs I will ever touch are the JetBrains suite because basically everything else is complete trash. It is the least terrible of the IDE ecosystem, I guess. And that is an upcoming video as well where I'm going to talk about why I think that JetBrains is just the least bad. Not good. I'm not going to specify good. It's the least bad though. So the reason that I do all my web development work in a code editor rather than IDE is because there's actually no benefit of using an IDE in this respect 
because the code completion on web languages, specifically JavaScript, is trash regardless of what you're using it with. So what I would rather do is use a lightweight code editor that has good enough code completion that works most of the time, basically as good as every IDE, and then bring in whatever plugins that I need to just support the little things that I want to do. And basically the main reason that JavaScript doesn't really get proper code generation support or code completion support is because it is a loosely typed language. And I've done a video on, have I done a video on loosely typed languages? Yes, I did. My JavaScript versus TypeScript video, I talk about why basically loosely typed languages are just an absolute pain to work with how I'd rather just never deal with them. So I think that that's comfortably dragged the video over the 10 minute mark. So I guess we can stop there. That's kind of why I was dragging on at the end there. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you use IDEs or you use coders, let me know why you use one or the other. Or if you just use both of them, hey, let me know that as well. So if you got any other ideas for things you want me to cover, then let me know it because I'm always looking for new things to talk about. So if you want to see videos like that when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates. But as always, YouTube can never be trusted to actually push updates to anyone. So also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So up on that corner, that, yeah, that corner there, there will be a playlist that this video is in and maybe you'll find something else to interest you in there. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video and I'm out.